Rick and Morty forever. Infinity, 1,000 years, Rick and Morty forever. Rick, I mean Morty. Music method. Whew. Welcome everybody. Today we have another Justin Towns Earl Van Zant. What's this kid's name? Justin. Justin. Justin Towns Earl. Justin Towns Van Zant Earl. You guys probably all know this story. He is Steve Earl's son, and Steve Earl, you know, loved Towns Van Zant. Named his kid after him, Justin Towns Earl. I don't know too much of his music. He's one of these guys that is. Whew, he's just got a lot of emotion. This kid. This kid is loaded with emotion and he pours them into the tunes. So this one is cool. Harlem River was sponsored. You can sponsor songs at mikesmusicmethod.com. It was sponsored by the lovely Jean Aquilina. Aquilina. Aquilina Water Lily. Jean Water Lily. Thank you, Jean. If you're new to Mike's Music Method, I'm a little goofy. I've had way too much coffee today. But what we do here, we do measure by measure breakdowns. I walk you through every measure, showing you what finger you should be using. The tab will be up on the screen in one of these locations, depending where my head is. And go to mikesmusicmethod.com. The tabs are all there. You can get them for free if you have to, but there's a value for value model, so more on that later. But that's it. Timestamps down below are your best friends. Starts a little slow because we talk a little bit about technique, but depending on your skill level, use those timestamps to jump around through the measures. And when you feel good about your playing, we start singing it, so that's timestamp down below as well. I show you how to build up singing and playing at the same time, and we discuss that, so look out for tips there. And then at the very end of the tune, I do slow run-throughs where we just go through the whole tune really slow together. So I'm excited to bring you this one. By the end of this song, you are just gonna be rock solid with what I call compound movements. And that is when you're doing a hammer-on on one string, but hitting another one at the same time. And it can be tricky for a lot of players. It occurs all the time in finger picking, but by the end of this video, you're gonna be a master at it because there's like two of them in every single measure. Capo is on the third fret and I'm doing a live version of him playing it. The studio version is very different, big full band. And that version is the KXT radio sessions. So thank you, Gene. Without further ado, let's jump right into Harlem River by Justin Towns Earl. Ooh, measure one. Remember we got Capo on the third fret. We're gonna breeze through this tune. That doesn't mean it's gonna be easy though. So we got an E chord, and you'll notice measure one is just a pickup beat. I'm hammering open to one. And this tune is just loaded with these things that I call compound movements, which means we have a hammer on, but at the same time we're hitting a different string than the one we're hammering onto. So whew, like I said in the intro, you are just gonna pow, get, get this going, this tune. So right when I hammer on open to one on the third string, so I have the E chord down, just doing that first finger on the third string. Doing it with my pointer finger in the right hand. But at the same time that I hammer on the third string, I'm hitting the sixth. Right, so I'm not sounding the third string again. So you gotta make sure you have a nice, powerful hammer on. The way I like to think about that is like, imagine that you're trying to hit the wall behind you, right? Like a follow through with your swing in baseball. I suck it. I'm looking at them, I'm staring into the microphone like it's you. <laughs> I'm off to a good start today. But you want to imagine that you're hitting the wall behind you, right? A really powerful... <laughs> I was literally staring into my microphone. <laughs> All right, so we got that movement down, that hammer on with the sixth string. Then we immediately hit the second string. And now what um, Justin is doing, he's a pointer finger only guy. I recommend doing the middle finger because it's just exhausting and he would be such a better player if he started to incorporate that middle finger. But then again, Merle Travis was a pointer finger only guy. So what, who am I to say anything? I'm just your internet guitar teacher, okay? So, but I still recommend the middle finger. So we got this, and then immediately hit that second string. So hammer on the third, compound movement where I'm hitting the sixth, middle finger plays the second. Then my thumb goes to the fourth. And now things already repeat. After my thumb does the fourth, I lift my pointer finger in the left hand so I can hammer again on that third string. And then 
I got the compound movement again. To the second string, thumb to the fourth, play the third string, but lift the pointer. And those are the first two measures, and it just loops. I know it like looks easy and the concept is easy, but if this is new to you and you haven't done this before, it is pretty darn tricky. So make sure you are going really slow. If you have to break the measure in half, break the measure in half. This is an amazing practice tip. Any song you're learning on my channel or anywhere else, you should take this to heart and really do this. So when I'm learning a complicated measure, if this is new to you, this is easy. Use the arrows, jump ahead a moment. Everything's time stamped down below. But I would just do this, the compound movement. Make sure I got that. Follow through with some simple thumbs. So I'm simply doing the very beginning melodic note, but I'm keeping it rhythmically in time. Then I might add the second note. Give a break, put it in time. And you always want to build your new songs this way. Then maybe after I do that for four minutes, I would add the next element. you know, little addition of those, you might have to practice 10 minutes, take a break, 10 minutes, and it might be seven sessions of that before you get just that little beginning part down solid. But this is the way to excellent guitar playing. And I would argue, you're, you're gonna learn the guitar that much faster, you're gonna excel that much faster if you take these baby steps like Bob, okay? Baby steps, build, build up to the complicated stuff. Measure four is a little different. He adds a, another color here, which is really cool. So we have that normal hammer on coming from three. Very cool. So we got the hammer on with this compound movement again. Middle finger plays open like it normally does. But here, after that middle, I'm gonna hammer on with my pinky onto the second fret of that, um, Sorry, second fret of the second string I'm hammering on with my pinky. Now I suppose you could do the chord this way. I don't think he is, but you can play your E chord like this because he's actually never hitting that fifth string. So if you have trouble with your left hand pinky, if you're like a weakling and your pinky's really weak and, and you know, girly and weak, effeminate, um, you can use your ring finger. I'm teasing you, I know girls can be strong too. Girl power, right? Yeah, because there's a girl watching this out there who can do more push-ups than me. I'm teasing you, ladies. You're beautiful, but let's be honest. You have breasts. I don't have breasts. It's all muscle. You got milk in those things, okay? I'm really digging the ditch here. All right, but you could do it this way where we got the middle finger down here. Um, so we're doing nothing on the fifth string. I got my middle, my pointer, and then I can hammer on with my ring. So this is a totally valid approach if it's, if it's difficult to hammer on with that pinky, because you're gonna be doing a lot of it this song. So jokes aside, it is hard, feel free to um, fret it like that. So talk through the whole measure here again. We got that hammer on, with that compound movement on the sixth string, then I'm gonna play the second string, and when I hammer on that second string, I'm also gonna have my thumb on the fourth string. And again, we might just build it this way. Right, I'm only getting halfway through the measure. notice there on one and two and I lift the pinky and we go back to open on that second string so we got the hammer on to one we quickly lift the pinky back up don't do it that high I'm exaggerating to show you what what movements I'm executing here now once in a while he doesn't do this every time but every once in a while he's then pinching and this sounds the coolest so I wrote it every time in the tab even though I don't think he's doing it every single time it's hard to tell because it's and is Justin, his thumb is just hitting it, and he's got this crappy guitar. Has everyone else, else noticed? Has anyone else noticed how crappy his guitar sounds every time he hits that D string? It, it must be intentional. It's like so low to the fretboard that it rattles, and it, it's cool, but it's annoying at the same time. I think he wants it to sound like a boom, pop, boom, pop, like someone's hitting the snare drum. Because every time he hits it, the action is so low that you feel the string like slap against the fretboard. And it's it's just the, the signature Justin uh, sound that's terrible, but like funny and cool and recognizable at the same time. So listen and let me know what you think. Certainly on his live recordings. I can't speak for the studio stuff. All right, so we're going to add that pinch in there. 
I'm just doing thumb and middle, six and one. And let, let's pay attention that he's doing everything with the pointer, which again, I think is quite difficult. What I'm doing is pointer, then I'm shifting my pointer to the second string there, doing the pointer again, but then when I do the top string, I'm doing the middle. So most people favor the pointer, but if you're gonna do this many things, I would definitely recommend middle finger for that high string to give the pointer a break. Then we go back to the second string with a hammer on and the compound motion. And that ends the measure because then it just, the pickup loops again like it did before. So three, four. coffee today usually I like brew a nice little half calf at home but whoo I got some good coffee in town and I'm like Poof, if you haven't if you haven't noticed yet so that's it we we got that whole intro part on an E on various recordings right I'm going off a particular live recording sometimes he runs through the whole progression with the E A and the B7 before he starts singing other times he's just banging away at this E before he goes into it so it's up to you after you learn the whole song feel free to just do an instrumental revolution of the whole thing before you start singing. But now let's do the verse. He simplifies that E thing to keep it easy and it's the same back to measure one and two here. We just got that hammer on on the third string and then the second's open. So we already talked about that in the first couple measures. So eight, nine, and 10, he was just singing on that E. Then we get to the A7. I think you all know how to do an A7, right? Second fret on the B string, second fret on the D string. That's it. And he's doing uh, five, one, four, two, five, one, four, two. <clears throat> There's some variety, we'll talk about that later, but for the most part, he's just keeping it simple like that. And I'm doing thumb, middle, thumb, pointer. Right, you get a little bit of a swing feel. That's it, thumb, middle, thumb, pointer. Chickaboo. The donation pitch. Mike's music method is run on the value for value model. I wanted to express that to you guys. Most of you know, but if you're a new listener here, a consumer of Mike's music method content, there's really no such thing as free content. Uh, if you think of like Google or something, they're getting a bunch of your information and other resources that they're using to fund that thing. What I'm doing here, just so you know, the YouTube ad revenues are are pitiful. I mean, they're fine. They're good. But unless you have like a huge channel, you're not making money. So the way Mike's music method works is it's a value for value model. If you guys are getting solid value from this channel, learning from this channel, please consider paying me for my time. This is a serious labor of love. It takes a lot of my time, talent, and treasure. And so in return, I'm just asking you give me some of your time, talent, and treasure. You can do that on PayPal, Patreon, snail mail me a check. Mike'sMusicMethod.com has all of that info. Another way would be just be, you know, write me a lovely letter to my P.O. box or at least leave a really encouraging comment down below because this takes up a lot of my time. I'm now a father of four. Oh, little Llewellyn's been brought into the world. It's amazing. But of course, you know, it, it, it's all, it, whatever. Life, life is time consuming and life is expensive, as you all know. So that's it. It's a value for value model. It, maybe every time you learn a song, it's 10 bucks. Every tab you grab is five or 10 bucks. Think of it that way. How, how can you support me? Obviously monthly financial support is the best. Some of you guys out there, I know you're not even taking guitar lessons and you're learning a bunch. So maybe, is that worth a hundred bucks a month? Maybe, if you can afford it, if you're really putting in the time, private guitar lessons can be 150 bucks a month if you were taking them every week. So you get it. I don't know what it's worth to you, but that's the beauty of the value for value model. And I ask because Unless, unless I ask, people don't give, right? The number one reason people don't give to charity, not, not that I'm not a charity, but you know what I mean, is because they're not asked to give to that charity. So what I'm doing here is asking you to just think about it, the value for value model. Sure, I know this content can be had for free, but it certainly is not free for me to make in my life. And that's it. Of course, if you're hard on luck, hard on times, in financial dire straits, I understand that that's the value for value model. That's why I keep it free. So everyone out there, everyone, 
right, with access to an internet, can consume this content. And then if you stumble on the funds one day, remember your old buddy Mike and how you learned Towns Van Zant from him, or Justin Towns Earl, or whatever song. And just think of old Mike and, you know, throw a tip in the hat. Onward. Onward with the song. Measure 13 is a little bonus measure. He doesn't do this all the time, but once in a while, just to add some color. We have the E chord again. There I'm doing six to three, thumb to pointer. Then I'm pinching on the second beat, and I put my pinky down again on the second fret of the B string, and I'm pinching the strings four and two. And you can do thumb pointer or thumb middle, doesn't matter. So six, three, pinch four and two. Then we play the second string again. Open, so I gotta lift the pinky there. Put the pinky down, then lift it and play the second string again. Second half of the measure is just six, three, four, two. So three, four. One more time, slower, three, four. Bunch of different ways to do this fingering at the beginning. If you notice how I do it, when I pinch, I'm doing thumb and middle. Then I alternate to my pointer. It's your call, no hard rule there. pointer, you could do um, pointer middle, your call, practice it a few different ways, but uh, as I always say, like quickly commit to one, just so you're not like indecisive and you mess up because you're not sure which one to do. So try it a few times, if one feels more comfortable, just write it in stone now and practice it that way. We are cruising along, as I said in the beginning, we will sing it after we, we get all these chords down, because it's, it's just a one, four, five, E, A, B. So we go to the B chord here and measure 14. Let's do that. So we've got a B7, but instead of your pinky being on the top string like you normally would have in a B7, my pinky is towards the ceiling. So I've got nothing, two, two, then I got one, and then two. And our picking is this. I'm pinching five and two with thumb and middle. And immediately my pointer finger plays the third string. So thumb and middle, pointer on the third. Thumb on the fourth right after that. And after that, I go back to middle finger on the second, but I've got to lift my left hand to sound it open. Three, four. Second half of the measure is back to thumb on five, pointer on three, thumb on four. Then we play the third string again, but we lift up because we're going to hammer into the E chord. And here, when we hammer, you can hammer into the entire chord because nothing's planted yet. So just use it to your advantage so you don't have to, like, you know, put the chord down, hammer, just do it all as one big motion. So that whole measure, 14, 3, 4. One thing to note, in that measure 14, there are times when, when I'm coming from that A7 and the pattern's like this, right? There's no pinch. So sometimes I forget to do the pinch uh, on the B7, and it's fine if you just, just stagger the B7. Again, once you kind of get through it, you'll, you'll figure out your own style and give yourself enough brain space while you're singing it. Boom! You already did it. Congratulations, that is it. You'll notice the tab is quite a bit longer, but I just gave you a little variety, right? Once in a while, he's, he's doing a little more than just this. Sometimes he'll add that extra hammer on, sometimes he doesn't. So I just gave you a little bit of variety so you can look through the tab, get a rough idea of how you wanna play it. But when he goes to the instrumental section, it's, he's just taking a break from singing and playing the guitar. Check out in your tab, free at mikesmusicmethod.com. If you go to measure 33, he'll occasionally just spice up the A7. And by occasionally, I, I don't know. I, I know for sure it's on this instrumental break. I don't think he's doing it when he's singing, but it's really cool. If you want to incorporate it more than once, go for it. And it looks like this. So he's just playing.
playing with that um, A6 A idea. I don't think he ever goes to the seven. When I noodle in the song, I'm always adding that third fret to the chords to give it that dominant seven feel. Uh, well, I guess we already have the seven in there, but it's just nice on top. Anyway, he, he'll hammer into that A7, kind of like that compound movement idea. So I'm hammering into the chord, only playing the second string with my pointer. And at the same time, hitting the thumb on the um, fifth string here. Then my pointer, or sorry, then my middle finger is going to the first string. Then thumb goes to the fourth. Pointer on the second again. So it's the beginning there. Three, four. You might just practice that. keep going at the second half of the measure so from the beginning though first we got that hammer on compound then the first string fourth second back to the fifth back to the first back to the fourth and then I put my pinky down second fret on the first string and I use my pointer I suppose you could use your middle and I'm brushing up so what he's doing is he's hitting more than one string to get a nice sound we're getting both of those second frets on the first two strings and if you hit the third in there that's fine too but so after that last downbeat with a thumb on the fourth string, we hit it up. So let's try that. Three, four. But he goes, he keeps doing that into the next measure. So thumb back to five, brush up. Thumb on four, brush up. And then he just finishes the measure. So from the beginning of 33 there, three, four. start singing it because you guys got it at the end of the video we'll do slow run throughs to make sure you got it but let's let's start putting the vocals in always always if you see me talk about singing before never start finger picking strum it well what I would do first and this isn't the video for that I tried to tab out the vocal melody on my guitar like literally every syllable he's singing I attempt to find the notes on my guitar that one exercise has done more for my ear in musicianship than any other thing I could tell you to do. It made me a better singer, it made my ear better, it made me a better guitarist, a better melody writer. That is like my number one, you know, request, request. It's my number one thing that I tell you to do, that you should do, that most of my students don't do, because it's hard, uh, but listen and transcribe as many vocal melodies as you can onto your guitar. It would look like this. Lord, I'm going uptown to the, to the Harlem River to drown. And I'm using my guitar as a crutch. I make sure I got it. I haven't practiced this song. I don't, don't know it that well yet. But I would do that 30, 40, 50 times. And then I try to drop the guitar. Lord, I'm going... All right, sing that. Switch the note right. Lord, I'm going uptown to the, to the Harlem River to, to, to drown, to the Harlem River to drown. And start singing things a cappella, like a crooner. That way you know every syllable you are dialed in. Then you put the chord. Lord, I'm going uptown to the heart. Right, that can be hard because it's you're not a chord tone there, right? It's out of the chord. Your brain and voice have to generate it because it's not being sounded by your instrument. To the to the Harlem River to drown. Croon everything like your Sinatra. It's going to make you a better singer, better player. You'll know how to play cool melodies on your guitar. It'll help you understand writing melodies. Do it. But I'm getting excited. Let's just strum the chord and sing it. I always do down strums to make sure I can sing and play together. We do baby steps. Lord, I'm going uptown To the Harlem River to drown Dirty water gonna cover me over And I'm not gonna make a sound 
then you could complicate the strum pattern or just go straight into the thumb. This song, let's go straight into the thumb because that's what we're aiming for. Lord, I'm going uptown to the Harlem River to drown. Dirty water gonna cover me over and I'm not gonna make a sound. Then I might pick a simple repetitive pattern just thumb pointer, thumb middle. Try something like that. Lord, I'm going uptown to the Harlem River to drown. Dirty water gonna cover me over. I'm not gonna make a sound. Then slowly but surely, you're gonna try to play the actual song. You might have to do it Lord, I'm going, Lord, I'm going uptown. And what I'm doing mentally in my mind is I'm getting very physical and then I'm mentally mapping out, okay, is that syllable a down or an upbeat? And if I ever miss it, I'm like really emphasizing that like feeling which words are down and which, which are up. To the Harlem River to drown Dirty water gonna co cover me over And I'm not And that pinch is gonna be tricky, right? And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make a sound So it will be hard. Everyone thinks like, oh, I can play the guitar. I'll just jump in and sing it. And then they go, I can't do it. It's too hard. It is hard but you have to practice it just as much as you practiced your guitar playing. You didn't pick it up and start finger picking it. You probably put like 12, 20, I don't know, 30 hours into it. I don't know your skill level, but that's the same thing with playing and singing at the same time. You are gonna have to slowly piece it together like that. You're gonna mess up, be like, oh, I have to pinch there on that syllable. I'm not singing when I pinch, I'm singing the moment after on the upbeat. And you've gotta give your time you gotta give your time brain. You've gotta give your brain time to process it. Time, process, brain, mission, forever, time. Time, brain, mission, process. Get it, forever, you can do it. Rick and Morty, forever. Infinity, 1,000 years, Rick and Morty, forever. Rick, I mean Morty. One little note about the singing. I don't know this song that well. Maybe it's different on the studio version, but the live version I've been listening to I think this is the only stanza, just the second one where he he doesn't do the B7 to E, he like ends the verse on the B7. So it's um Troubled days are behind me now, and I know they're gonna let me in. So instead of going to the B7 early, he hangs on to that E and ends the lyric on the B7. Instead of like E, B7, E. So just note that. Um, you can follow along with a chord chart or watch him do it, but note that one is, is different than the rest. All right, slow run throughs. We're just gonna play it from the beginning to basically just to like measure 15 because the whole thing just loops. So let's do it nice and slow so you can see the main parts here. Remember there's a pickup, we come in on the and of the fourth beat. One, two, three, four. haven't noticed I'm really pumped up on caffeine but just so you know guys I have I brought my fourth child into the world 
and it's amazing. And I'm, I'm getting some sleep. My wife's pretty amazing. So we're working it out where she's got the night shift. I wake up really early with the boy. But, um, you know, still a little tired. So to make up for it, you get a heavily caffeinated Mike's Music Method. I hope you're enjoying it and, and learning and getting a little laughs here as well. I don't know why I felt the need to do this. Just wanted to update you on my life. I feel like we're internet friends, even though I don't know you. Rick and Morty forever. Infinity, 1,000 years. Rick and Morty forever. Rick, I mean Morty, 